Okay, so um, <clears throat> off we go. Welcome, very you know, hearty welcome to everybody who's come and attended at this early hour of the morning. And apologies, I, I believe there was a, um, a slight mix up with the, <clears throat> the timing that some of you may have noticed um, that it, it should have been uh, GMT which is what it is now so it's it's, it's our normal time from now on <clears throat> and i've got a bit of a funny throat so again apologies if i go croaky um so uh first of all i've been asked to do a welcome on behalf of land of joy um i'm not there at the moment um and it's a shame actually we we can't be there because it is a very beautiful welcoming uh lovely space and um yeah it, it's on a, on a lovely day like today it would be it would be great to be there however um this is better than nothing so um let's uh let's make the most of it and um again just to let you know that that yeah that, that's fine i think that's all i need to say about land of joy maybe i'll say a bit more at, at the end so tracy welcome would you would you mind just muting yourself for now thank you Okay, so some some of you I know, um, good to see some friends and some I've not met before. So um, it, let's just start with a, um, a bit of um, introduction. Hi there, hi. <laughs> um, so I'm, uh, I was asked to do this course, which I'm, I was very actually thrilled to be asked to do it, um, and a great subject, and I've really enjoyed researching it. Normally, um, I have led a few courses at a couple of courses at Land of Joy before on uh, mindfulness in nature have been the ones that I've led before so this is a slightly new direction and uh, a very interesting one for me. Um, I am a, a Buddhist myself, Land of Joy is a Buddhist centre, I am a Buddhist myself and have been for some time um, but the, this, this course is um, aimed at, at people of any faith or of none. Um, I will be what I know, what I understand of compassion and what I'll be trying to put across uh, comes from my understanding of Buddhist teachings. But um, I'm really uh, I've tried to present it in a way that, that doesn't assume um, any Buddhist understanding or any, you know, any, I'm not trying to sign up any new recruits either. So just take from it what you what you find helpful. And um, and uh, hopefully in the course of discussions, we can um, yeah, we can come to some, of the, some shared understanding and also, you know, recognize any differences that there may be in our understanding. Um, this will, will be recorded, um, it is being recorded, um, but um, I'm going to ask people to introduce themselves in a moment, but any, anything personal, obviously, um, will not be um, will not be put on the recording because it will be shared on the in, on the YouTube uh yeah on the on the land of joy uh website so um yeah i think that's fine um anything it will be kind of discussions question and answers and we just um remind people obviously to be compassionate when when we're talking and discussing and also to recognize um you know sort of privacy um people's any privacy issues as well um should that arise Okay, so so that's me. I say I'm Lynn. I've been um, uh, a Buddhist for about well, nearly forty years now, I guess. So it's the, it is tends to be the way I see the world, but uh, mostly I find it um, uh, just a very helpful way of looking looking at the world and trying to um, get navigate my way through life, really. Um, and. Yeah, what, I, what I'm going to ask you to do is one by one, if you don't mind, um, just say your name and maybe one thing that you would hope to gain from attending the course this weekend. Um, then I'll talk a little bit more about the course. So, uh, um, and perhaps if you sort of say your name <clears throat> and then uh, and say your, your sort of one thing, what you're hoping to get from the course, if you can think of it. And then say the name of, of somebody else and the next person will know to mute so we can kind of go smoothly on. So and I think that's everybody, isn't it now? Who's um yeah, everybody's spoken. 
Okay, so uh, I'll just give a brief outline um, of, of how I see the weekend going. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to answer the, the points that were raised of people's expectations, at least in my planning I've, I've covered them, so um, I hope all goes according to plan. Um, never a guarantee, but I'm, I'm certainly planning to look at, um, just investigate, unpick a little bit compassion in general, and I'll be doing more of that today, what it is, what it isn't, what gets in the way of developing compassion and what helps us to develop our, our compassion in general. Um, and then tomorrow in particular, focus down more on compassion for ourselves, because I think a couple of people have mentioned, and it's certainly my experience, it's so much easier to have compassion for other people um, than it is ourselves, generally speaking. Um, we can be our own worst enemy, our own harshest critic a lot of the time. Um, and, you know, we wouldn't treat a dog the way we treat ourselves sometimes in terms of our the, the, the critical voice. So it is important. And while we can be compassionate towards others um, without kind of focusing on ourselves, um, it's 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 very difficult to sustain it and we get to I think what Leslie was talking about that stage of, of burnout when we really just can't keep it up anymore because we need we need nourishment ourselves to do that so that will be tomorrow um, looking in more depth at that um, and also looking at uh, just in the last session a sort of a glimpse at the impact um, compassion can have on the world you know, if we have compassion for ourselves and compassion to others, and to the extent that we can develop our compassion, um, the, you know, the extent that we can influence those around us, and who knows how far those ripples of influence will spread. Um, I'm, because it was originally planned as a, as a retreat, um, and because we all kind of work hard during the week and, you know, whatever we're retired or not, this, we're still busy during the week. Um, I thought I would make it as, uh, quite heavily focused on uh, meditation and reflection together. Um, I'll give some presentation, but I certainly won't be talking for the entire morning. I'll give sort of, you know, a little bit each in each session. But within each session, I plan that we'll have... Um, two meditation sessions that, um, and these actually will be the tools that help us to develop compassion. So the first session, which we'll start in just a moment, will be our first act of compassion, kindness to ourselves, where we will be settling within our body and within our minds and just coming home, finding a place to come home to. Um, I'm guessing from the sound of things that people are already quite familiar with that practice, but we'll, we'll I'll you know, introduce a few ideas along the way anyway. Um, and then after the, towards the end of the session, we'll do a, a, a reflection on um, what we've actually been talking about. Um, and there will be time for, uh, for discussion as well. Um, hopefully our question and answer discussion between ourselves at the end of each session uh, before we go off for our, our cup of tea, our tea breaks. So, um, so hopefully I'll, I'll, what, I'm, what I'm hoping to get from the day is that I will, well, it seems like you're already inspired or enthused to develop compassion. You already recognize the, the value of it. So job done there, no, no problem. But also to give us the tools to, to develop in, in various aspects and at, at various levels. So I hope that's okay. So let's start with, um, uh, let's start with a 10 minute say, session of um, meditation. So is there anybody who hasn't meditated before at all? If you just raise your hand, no? Okay, I've got that feeling. So we'll do just, I mean, if you have your own practice already that works for you, which is one of settling the mind and settling the body, then by all means, just slip into that practice. Um, if not, I'll just give a few a few guidelines and then we'll do that practice together. So initially we focus on a posture which is um, supportive of meditation. Um, if you want to turn off your cameras, you're very welcome to do so um, for this time. If you want to leave them on, that's also fine. 
So let's first become aware of our bodies. And say we take adopt a posture that is um, supportive of meditation. The qualities, the mental qualities we want to develop are stability and stillness to give our minds, our busy minds a rest. And also um, alertness. Unless we're really exhausted, we don't want to drift into sleep. We want to um, develop uh, this, this um, habit of meditation, which um, brings us to a place of ease and rest that isn't sleep. And the third quality of body and mind which supports those is to be relaxed. So to be relaxed in our body and to relax, to let go of any expectations of what a meditation session should or shouldn't be. And just gently bring your awareness through your body. Being aware of any physical sensations, starting at the top of your head going down to the soles of your feet, feeling grounded, supported by the chair, the floor, the cushion, whichever, but also feeling alert. If there's any area of tension or discomfort in the body now, then make any adjustments as you breathe out. And gradually narrow your focus of awareness from your body, specifically to your breathing. So wherever you're more aware of the breath, whether it be at the nostrils, as the air comes in and out, the chest, or the rising and falling of the abdomen, whichever, then maintain your focus there. Just observe what's happening. Don't breathe in any special way, but observe what happens with each in and out breath. And as you all know, your mind will inevitably wander. It's natural, it's what minds do. They're used to being active. So don't worry, just gently bring your attention back whenever you notice it's gone.
And this simple breathing meditation can actually be the most basic uh, but most profound act of kindness to yourself that we do for ourselves. By training the mind to come home to a place of peace, which we can access at any time. That's a really good place to start. Okay, and gently relax the meditation. Okay, so um, let's um, think today about this to start with about um, a definition maybe of of meditation of not meditation sorry of compassion um, I mean we all know it people have said in their introductions they're aware of what compassion is uh, it's it's uh, not a specifically Buddhist thing it's part of every religion part of every community and actually if we think about it, society wouldn't be able to function at all without it. Um, so we kind of know we kind of know what it means, but um, we can just go deeper, I think, and unpick it a little bit, and that can kind of help us in if we want to um, uh, cultivate our sense of compassion. So I mean, basically, I'm coming from the the place that I think compassion is a good thing. Um, it's it's a great a necessity um, in terms of, of our own well-being and the well-being and the health of societies we live in, that uh, it is something not that we're born with or without, that we all have to a degree, that we all recognise it to agree. I think people have said that, uh, shown that at the beginning, but actually it is, a, it is a, a state of mind. Actually, yeah, that's another factor, that it is a state of mind when we're feeling compassionate um, we're not necessarily acting or anything like that. It's something that we feel, um, an emotion or a mental state, some kind of mental state. Um, and that it is possible to develop it, to develop it um, further, um, actively, consciously. We can uh, develop it in terms of, at the moment, if when we feel compassion, well, uh, 
it really does vary, but it tends to be in response to a particular stimulus. So it might be when I was thinking about, you know, sort of times when I've been really moved by something, moved by compassion, um, images that came to mind were things like, um, uh, I still can barely bear to even say it, let alone remember it, but the, when in the Australian bushfires, the, the koala bears who, who were burned, um, on, you know, Red Nose Day, whenever you see the videos of people's the suffering that is, that is involved in people's lives, um, can be very moving, very moving. Items on the news, I mean, you know, now, um, uh, yeah, it's in particular, I guess, we're more focused on the news and focused on how our interactions we, with each other and how much we depend on each other, um, then, we're much more aware of compassion, I think, and the need for it, the compassion in life. Um, and, you know, from our own life experience, uh, we, we know what it is. So um, uh, one, of, one of the books, uh, yeah, so I've shown, sort of put a list of resources. I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look at them yet, but one of the books that I really um, have, have uh, taken a lot from here uh, is a book, this book here, called A Fearless Heart. Uh, it's on the book, it's on the resources list, so you don't need to write it down, by Tubton Jimpa, who was a Tibetan Buddhist monk, um, was also translated to His Holiness the Dalai Lama for a very long time, is now raising a family and, and living a uh, normal life in um, a non-monastic life in, um, in Canada. Anyway, a definition that, that he, he had is, um, Compassion is a sense of concern that arises when we are confronted with another's suffering. So first we're talking about compassion in general. A sense of concern that arises when we're confronted with another's suffering and feel motivated to see that suffering relieved. Within that, there's um, three different aspects. Um, two of them we would generally recognise. The third one isn't necessarily... Uh, so it, explicit generally, I, th I think. So first of all, we recognize somebody's pain, the difficulties, that the, the trouble that, that they're having. We see it, um, we notice it. Um, and that's not always the case. Again, that, that we can get better or be better or worse at that. Um, and second aspect is that we care, that it bothers us. Um, again, our own or others uh, pain. So when we're talking about other people, then uh, we often think of empathy in, in terms of that. We see another's pain and we, it bothers us. And within science, they talk about, or they, you know, they kind of sort of wire up people's brains. And they, see that, they, they say that apparently, if we observe another's pain with empathy, um, we, uh, the, the areas of the brain that would be associated with their own pain also light up um, as well. So it's as though we're experiencing that pain ourselves, that, that's empathy. And that's, it's important, I'll, I will go back to that later to make that distinction. And then there is the, the wish to see that suffering removed. Um, that's an element that doesn't always necessarily get, um, uh, people don't ne always necessarily focus on that, that aspect of it. Um, and so, if you go back to the say the, the 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 Latin root of compassion, it means to suffer with, and so people think it's that empathy side of things. It's that you see another person's pain, and you are moved. You 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 care. It it upsets you. Um, but the third element is um, uh, which we, is often there, um, but it's not always recognised. Is that wish to remove? Can I help? And maybe I can, and maybe I can't. But the the compassion takes it takes it further. Um, does that, anybody have any, any problems with that? Raise your hand if you have any, any difficulties or anything you'd like to question already. No? Oh, yeah. um, okay, so it can be helpful to know what it isn't as well, uh, to be clear in the compassion. So obviously the 
in, often when they talk about these these uh, these types of qualities, they talk about uh, far enemies, which is the exact opposite. So clearly, it's not cruelty or indifference. You know, we can see they are kind of the opposite. And, and where cruelty or indifference are in the mind, compassion can't arise because they're completely opposite of each other. They also talk about near enemies, which are kind of states of mind which are kind of have some similarities and can sometimes be confused with, with these positive qualities we want to develop, but actually are different. And it's important to, to kind of get, get that difference. So what it isn't um, is pity. We, we, you know, pity, feeling pity for somebody is different from feeling compassionate towards somebody. Feeling pity somehow, when I was thinking about how to uh, distinguish the two, what came to my mind was that somehow, if I if I pity you, it somehow suggests that, that I've got it all together, that I, I don't have this problem, and if only you were as clever or as wise as me, then, you know, I wish that for you so that you don't have that problem too. Whereas, of course, compassion comes from the, the, the place of, of, you know, whereas pity is up looking down, compassion comes from a place of we're all in this together. Today, it's you who's got this problem. Yesterday, it was me or tomorrow, it could be me. We all, we all share, we have this, this, this same, this basic equality. And so if I can help you now, that's fine. Uh, and I will do so to the, the best of my ability. Um, knowing full well that maybe you helped me yesterday or maybe you will help me tomorrow. Um, no, there's no feeling of superiority involved, which there's, there may well be, you know, either delicately and however kind of hidden in within pity. And within societies that are kind of marginal, I, I was friends with, uh, with a, a young man who grew up in Chad and it was a lived on the edge of sort of the Sahara and within his society there was just that that so much more equality of of course you help somebody because you know very much if you're living you know if if, if your if your livelihood or if your everything could kind of disappear um overnight um which actually we all know now then of course there's going to be much more mutual um support and help um so it's not pity and it's not sentimentality either. It's just, oh, bless, oh dear, oh, what a shame. And then moving on. There's that real heartfelt connection there with it. Um, also something that tends to get maybe not a bit confused or a bit muddled up, a little tied up with, with compassion is um, righteous anger. Um, that comes up a lot. We see, we see suffering. We maybe see the cause of that suffering or what we think is the cause of that suffering, and we get angry on behalf of, of that person. And, and so we're distracted away from, um, from compassion there. And what, um, yeah, that, that the thing that really kind of brought that alive to me, I was reading um, in the magazine, um, the Mandala magazine, in fact, where I've, I've already reproduced one article and I couldn't find this article, but it was by, it was an article written by um, a prisoner in a, an American prison. And he was, um, he was attending a meditation group and he was say he kind of noticed when he was thinking about compassion, he noticed within that group over a course of a couple of months, there were two different um, stories of a young child dying. Uh, that they that they all the prisoners became aware of um, within within their discussion group, and two totally different responses. One was um, where I think it was two twins, a set of twins who'd been conjoined at, at the head, and the uh, they they'd been aware there'd been lots of media uh, cover coverage of you know the trying to separate the twins and would they survive and would they not? And one twin did survive and one twin didn't. And the, the guy who wrote the article was saying, you know, within their group, they just, everybody just felt intense compassion for both the, the, the twins uh, and their parents, obviously. It was just this outpouring of, of compassion. A few months later on, there was another um, story in the media where they, um, uh, it was a young girl who was murdered. I mean, equally tragic, equally tragic loss to the family. Um, but the compassion was just very fleeting, they said with them. Straight away, they got involved in anger. 
anger against you know the perpetrator of the murder whoever it was and it was just a whole totally different experience and of course they're you know they're, they're different situations but his point was that that and I yeah it made an impression on me is that in the second one the compassion got lost it got overwhelmed it it, it was a distraction the the anger maybe because the the compassion was was the pain was too difficult to be with I don't know who knows whatever whatever um uh triggers there are but um compassion can be difficult to to sit with to be with and we can distract ourselves in any number of ways and maybe um sometimes you know anger is is a response um outrage uh, uh, stuff that's happened but if that if we get distracted by that then we've lost touch with our we, we, we're in danger of losing touch with our compassion um okay so we all experience compassion to a greater or lesser degree at some time in our life and generally it tends to be as i said sort of dependent on a on an external trigger or, you know somebody we care about or or this somebody something or someone we have some connection with we, we see their suffering and uh, it, it elicits a response in us um it tends to be limited to in terms of intensity and there's only so much we can bear and it tends to be limited in terms of you know extent who we feel it for there are some people beings creatures we feel compassion for and others we don't um, and it also is limited by how we're feeling on the day um, you know how much energy we've got um, that kind of thing knowing those those factors those can help us uh, we can kind of work with those to help develop it to cultivate it more strongly um, while being compassionate with ourselves at the same time not expecting perfection um, you know but actually what what the, the the teachings say the experience of people who've done this kind of work says is that um we can actually develop our compassion to such an extent that it is just part of who we are it is just compassion is just one of those qualities that is always present in the mind so that whatever situation we're in um compassion uh, our response comes from compassion and when we're just by ourselves compassion is still there within our minds it just is part of a permanent part of our mind stream um, so that's what's possible um, slowly slowly we would we would get there and we will work out we'll look at um, a bit later on how how you get there and what what sort of things get, might get in the way of it. So there's two aspects. There's, there's what we can do to cultivate it and some of the meditations will be uh, around that. And then there's what is it in us that, and in people generally that tends to block our compassion, our natural compassion. Um, and so we can do some meditations around that as well. And I think just the last thing, um, yeah, the last thing that, I want, no, the last two things I want to say is that, um, I think we all know that it is generally it is what our compassion is one of the things that distinguishes us as, as human beings as, as what makes us human for a while i don't know there was a there was a view going around um uh, based on a misunderstanding i think of even the evolutionary sort of process that actually if we are kind if we are compassionate it is just because we want to get something back you know kind of the notion of dog eat dog in the world or the selfish gene we're only doing it so that we can reproduce <laughs> we're only being kind so we can reproduce and actually i think uh science now is saying and 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 religions and philosophies have been saying forever really that compassion is a natural part of being human um, to a greater or lesser degree as i say that, and that we can actively consciously cultivate it to a greater degree it's not an aberration it's just who we are and we feel better in ourselves we feel more human more connected um, when we are acting from a place of compassion when we're able to do so um, oh yeah and the other thing i suppose i want to say is that when um yeah the oh yeah no I'll, I'll come back to that later yeah it does take it can also take great courage um 
to, to consciously commit to developing compassion as well. Um, okay, let's um, move. I'm going to move on to a, a meditation. Uh, I want to, to, as much as possible through the meditations, to get a felt sense of, of um, you know, some of the feelings behind and involved within compassion and, and compassion itself. Uh, so that, um, well, it's just a, a very effective way of doing a meditation, I think. So <clears throat> this Sorry one... Sorry to interrupt, um, Lynn, um, no? could I just ask Chasey, did you have a question? Can you unmute, please? Thank you. Yeah, it was really to say, um, fitting with what you were saying, um, Lynn, there are so I had an experience of being with somebody who had lost a baby who was stillborn and it was a friend of mine and um there was one point I mean I was with her through various different stages of, of it all but I do remember really strongly being with her when she was back home and being utterly overwhelmed with her really and needing <laughs> I I was I was overwhelmed for her situation generally I think but I just remember needing to get out <laughs> to get away from her which was so hard mm -hmm. <laughs> because she didn't have that luxury mm. um to run away from it um so I think what you were saying just rang true, really, that's, that sometimes, sorry. <laughs> it, Don't worry. You can reach a point where it's really hard to take any, you know, to, to, to still be there, I suppose. And I was just recognizing that that can be incredibly, it can be, in, it can need incredible courage, I guess, to, mm. and resources, um, which I guess is why we're all here, because we recognise it's difficult, but yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't realise I get upset. But... Don't worry, don't worry at all. Yeah, um, I, I think that's, I think that's absolutely right, that, that over being overwhelmed, um, that was one of the things we're going to be looking at again. But feeling overwhelmed is one of the, the main fears that we have when, when we're, we're being compassionate. And actually not just a fear, an, an, an experience of being feeling overwhelmed. Um, which, is, which is how I think by going through those experiences, as you've done, giving the best that we possibly can, we begin to learn um, wisdom as well, the wisdom, which is another another side of, of compassion. And um, those of you who know the Buddhist path know that it, it's, it's the other wing, that the two aspects uh, go together, wisdom and compassion. Wisdom in knowing what's cap what we're capable of, um, in knowing when you know, we need to um, look after ourselves, have compassion for ourselves a bit and to take ourselves away. And also wisdom in knowing what's possible what's possible we can't actually take away somebody else's suffering that's not possible we can help to the best of our ability and knowing that setting realistic expectations for ourselves i think is 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 one of the ways that we can we can develop that wisdom but you know it's it's not a, a magic bullet we tend to get overwhelmed and and you know, and then we learn, oh, can't do that. I tried my best, I really helped as much as I could, but it took it was too much. So another time I might try something different. Who knows? But yeah, thank you for sharing. Thank, thank you. you. Anne, Anne. I just thought as you were saying that, mm -hmm. um, I know we can't take away anyone else's suffering, but sometimes by our reaction, if it's a compassionate reaction, we can stop it escalating for them. So we can, uh, and I think that's a huge thing because uh, I don't know you, you observe people. I expect you, we do it ourselves too, but you can see it in other people easier. They just make their own problems, and sometimes simply by a, 
a simple reaction. It might actually be saying nothing, but just being there, it can stop it escalating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a very good point too. Thank you. And in fact, you know, that that's <clears throat> will <clears throat> in the, the next session, we'll be looking at suffering uh, in a bit more detail. And, and I think you've kind of highlighted there that that's one of the aspects of suffering is that there is the original pain or difficulty or problem. And then depending on how we ourselves react to it, to our own difficulties or problems, we can make it better or worse. We can add to it by um, by getting this this escalation, this 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 thing, or or by our behaviour, uh, if if other people are involved, or we can try take a few deep breaths, maybe do that that kind of you know sort of mindful meditation for a short while, and just keep things a bit more in perspective. So I think that's a very good point. Thank you, Anne. Yeah, Sue. Yes, I was just going to add to the conversation having worked with vulnerability for the whole of my working life um, as a nurse and um, you know remember some situations where I found myself totally overwhelmed um, by what I was hearing and witnessing and um, you know it was simply too big <laughs> too big for me to hear um, mm -hmm. but I guess in terms of what it taught me was, um, you know, if I felt that and it wasn't my issue, I was listening to it. It gave me such invaluable insights as to how enormous this was for the individual. D does that, does that make sense? Mm. Um, uh, you know, it, it, I, it, it, it was overwhelming but it it it's not my issue but I felt it as if it was so goodness knows what it's like if it is actually your issue um yeah. and um I think that in turn I mean it, I was fortunate enough to have supervision in in the work that I did but in turn that enabled me to in some ways continue to develop being compassionate because it gives you that valuable insight as to how enormous, you know, in the face of adversity, the enormous things that people have to find a place in their lives to live with. Do you, do you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. And in my professional life, I found that very helpful. So does, it never changed um, the degree of being taken by surprise on occasions. <laughs> never never change that but um yeah uh it just you know it just helped in understanding really it's quite hard to articulate isn't it because they're such deep feelings yeah yes yeah no but thank you thank you that's that's helpful yeah and in a sense echoed something of what tracy said of of you know when you're saying if, if it's bad this bad for me how awful it must be for them you know Tracy you were saying I could get away but my friend couldn't that was it and, and that's a fact of life isn't it yeah but but yeah to be able to use it to be able to not use it that sounds um I don't yeah uh but to be able to kind of learn something from that I guess uh take something from that helpful is uh can be good Avril sorry yeah no I was just going to say that it, it compassion then becomes a coping um, method almost just when things are so so overwhelmingly moving and uh, yeah so is it a coping me mechanism compassion yeah I think I'll, I'll just briefly mention here thank you Avril um the 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 set which we'll look at next but the second part the third part of the the definition remember said there's uh and the, the distinction between empathy which many of us i think are describing here this 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 feeling with um with um the other person and compassion which um is the wish to remove it but actually there's there's more than that i was reading an article by um Matteo Ricardo, a, a Buddhist monk and, and meditator, and he was talking about this, this he was doing, involved in some experiments to do with um, measuring compassion and uh, sort of brain 
scan type things. And uh, that was when they noticed that within empathy, the same areas of, of um, suffering kind of lit up in one's own brain. Whereas when he was meditating, when he was meditating on compassion and doing it from a, a Buddhist point of view, which was, which had some kind of, I was trying to work out, had some kind of bigger context to make sense of it, whether it be a philosophy or religion, just your own kind of worldview. Um, that once it moved to compassion and he had something to do and there was a particular meditation he could do, then actually the, the, the bits of the brain kind of, you know, changed and actually the bits of brain lit up that were to do with, not pleasure exactly, but, but you know, with well-being, those bits lit up. So it's moving from empathy to compassion. And I think that movement has a, has that sense of a context and understanding and that's part that's part of it is wisdom recognizing what's possible and what's not recognizing you know that other people are suffering and maybe having some kind of mechanism like a, a meditation technique or a, a phrase or something that you would say to yourself can actually move us beyond that overwhelm and beyond that exhaustion that that comes with the the overwhelm i think Okay, so um, we've got uh, until 10.15. So should we do, let's try a meditation now, if that's okay. And then uh, we'll stop just a minute or two before um, tea break um, and, uh, and then have a tea break. So let, let's, let's, uh, let's get back into a, a, a comfortable posture, supportive posture. And this will be a different kind of meditation where I'll take us through, um, I'll make some suggestions and try to develop some kind of inner sense of, of what I'm saying really. But first of all, sit and connect with home, with your breath, with that inner space of calm and peace. So compassion often manifests in kindness, maybe kind act or words, or merely just a kind presence. So let's have a look at, investigate kindness, our experience of kindness for a while. So can you think of someone in your own life who has been a figure of kindness for you? The mere recollection of whom fills you with joy and gratitude. It might be a teacher who gently nudged you along at school and helped you recognize your personal strengths early on. It might be a loyal friend who lets you know they have your back. Or it could be your parents who provided you with a powerful anchor as you grew up. If no memory of a specific person comes up immediately, Leave the question open and stay with the breath. Maybe sleep on it tonight. If somebody has come up, if you get a sense of that person, then try to kind of focus on the felt sense. The 
senses of joy and gratitude that come as you think of that person, as you imagine that person. Maybe call to mind now any occasions when you've been the beneficiary of compassionate or kind acts. For example, when if your car or computer broke down, somebody came along and fixed it. When you were completely lost somewhere, had no idea where to go, somebody helped you find the way. When you are feeling insecure in a different, difficult situation, a new situation, a new job or a, a new place, a new home, somebody reached out to you in some way to make you feel welcome and at home. Just sit for a while <clears throat> and let any memories arise. And again, as they do, as they take shape in your mind, take form in your mind, try to get a sense of what it felt like, what it feels like, even to remember it, what it felt like at the time. The relief, the gratitude. Or maybe there have been times of bigger griefs and trauma in your life. Has there been somebody there who was maybe able to offer practical help? Or maybe not, but they could maybe help by listening, by being there, by giving a hug when it was needed. The great American writer Maya Angelou once said, people may forget what you said, 
they may forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. That's true in my experience, I think. So maybe now just briefly call to mind some time when you have acted out of compassion with kindness and say so maybe not done anything practical but you've been with somebody you've sat with them you've been with them the emotions the difficulties the How was it for you, I guess? It's not straightforward. It's not painless. But ultimately, how does it feel to act out of compassion? And then finally, briefly, as if we needed to be convinced, just try to imagine a day where there is no kindness. Even those small acts of kindness, like letting another motorist pull him out in front of you, putting on your mask, smiling, even from behind your mask. Actually, society would, wouldn't function. Compassion and kindness are the oil that keeps the wheels moving. They're not luxuries. They're necessities, as the Dalai Lama often says. Okay, and then gently end the meditation. Okay, so uh, uh, almost tea break. If there's anything anybody uh, wanted to say just before we go off, um, then please indicate, if not, Let's go and have a nice cup of tea. <laughs>